Okay, welcome everyone to the Python team. We did a project on hand gesture classification using video labeling of gesture bi based biosignals. Our technical directors for this project were Matthew Fleury, our machine learning team lead, Zhao Feng Tan, the director of algorithms, and Henry Valk, our substitute technical director for this project. My name is Colin Davis, and I'm a computer engineering major. A brief company overview. Python Technology was founded in 2016, and they began in the ALS community to help people who could no longer use their day-to-day -day technologies. Uh, they began evolving into a more broad company that dealt with uh, merging technology with humans' capabilities to optimize their cognitive and physiological capabilities through gesture control. The project motivation for this specific project was to be able to use a portable wrist device, such as the device you see on the right, which is a version of the current device. And it uses electrodes to sense EMG signals that come through your wrist. And with the use of a machine learning model, it would be able to determine a gesture classification. You can see multiple gestures in the bottom right hand of this slide. And that's what I'm talking about. Certain gestures that someone can do with their hands that can then activate something else. So for example, we can use this in robotics and drones using different gestures to steer robots or move drones left and right, take pictures, et cetera. We can use this for military and geolocation uses as well. Also later on, it will definitely have compatibility with AR and VR technologies. The anticipated best outcome for this project is to have a fully operational and robust automatic gesture labeling algorithm. And when I mean fully operational, I mean that if you're in the field, you will be able to seamlessly use this technology without fault. That means that this needs to be automatic and that's the most important aspect of this. This device needs to be always taking samples of data and pushing it through the pipeline in order for this to be as accurate as possible. And having this automatic pipeline would set Python ahead of the game for this technology. Team key accomplishments so far. As a team, we worked with the Python device version one as well as the Android phone that interacts with the device. We were able to see how they work together and what we need to do to make this project better. We went through an onboarding process that helped us transition into the workflow of this project. We also learned a lot of Python code and developed within the Jupyter Notebooks platform. We did manual labeling to help compare gesture classifications, which helped us learn how, how much time it takes for data to be processed and how redundant it can be when manually classifying each gesture hand by hand by looking through videos frame by frame. We did research and development on key point generation, merging timestamps, LDAs and random forests, as well as dynamic time warping and KWL algorithms, which we'll get to in a little bit. Hello, everyone. My name is Jamie Gagnon. I'm also a computer engineering major. Without a doubt, the best economic impacts of this project would firstly create an automated data labeling algorithm for future use of other data collection apps. Other impacts include further integrating humans and computers being very marketable for investors. This would benefit Python as well as future technologies to come. There are two diagrams we used. Uh, we use on the left, a, this one shows that the Python device is interacting with the Android phone uh, using Azure to push data into the Google Cloud platform using Google, uh, the notebook server and keep the pipelines to make a model. And the one on the right is the pipeline. We use that to help guide us in the development process of validating the semi-automated algorithm. So I had mentioned before key point generation. And what we did was there was a data collection day that Python did where they took uh, people from their company and they were set them up with a uh, Android phone, which would prompt them with what gesture they needed to do. They also had the Python device on their wrist, which would then sense the EMG signals and can then detect and output what um, classification was detected. And the key point generation algorithm was a Python script that would process the video files from these uh, test days. And it would search through them frame by frame to where a timestamp would tell them this is exactly where a gesture should have been done. So this way we're essentially filtering the videos to get rid of the non-test data. So we're not dealing with hours and hours of videos to search through. 
And I talked about the DTW algorithm earlier, but this stands for dynamic time warping. And on the right, you can see a graph of a bunch of series, uh, time series signals, which are the EMG signals that would be detected from someone's wrist. And all of these signals are then synchronized so that you can analyze it a lot better. And you can see the humps in the graph and these stand for a possible onset. And we have a threshold that's set for the dynamic time warping algorithm. And when that threshold is met or exceeded, we then see a highlighted window, which is detected to be an onset. And in this situation, you could see that there was onsets on both the onset and possibly the offset as well. And this was interesting. So here we're merging the data um, and sticking the timestamps. So here it was useful because we had to evaluate the data later on. And in order to do that, it's more useful to have timestamps um, synced and all the data merged so we can evaluate it in one area. Um, that's next is we used um, LDAs and random forest to test predictions. And we the here is a random forest uh, confusion matrix. However, this is misleading since the accuracy was due to overfitting and we seek to rectify this in the future, considering that we're probably gonna use an XG boost or some other method. Um, next, we had a KWL algorithm that we used that was implemented and designed by uh, TD Zhaofeng Tan to calculate and detect kurtosis wavelengths. We are using this to detect onsets as well as compare with the DTW as mentioned before to evaluate true positives, false positives, true negatives, and false negatives. Um, the, the remaining challenges for this project are to evaluate what we did uh, for the semi-automated and um, develop the block diagram for the fully automated, as well as integrate changes to the semi-automated to create the fully automated. Um, we, we are, so, and afterwards we should validate the fully automated as we did with the semi-automated. We are fully confident and um, with the help of Colin to and our TDs to achieve the anticipated best outcome by April 15th. All right, we'd like to thank Matthew Fleury, the machine learning team lead, Zhao Feng Tan, the director of algorithms, and a special acknowledgement for Henry Valk for stepping up and being a huge uh, impact on this project, Brendan Smirbeck, the consulting technical director, and of course, Dr. Sunak, the Ely Comp Capstone program director. Thank you all for listening. Have a wonderful day.